Clash detection is usually a time-consuming task that often involves reviewing the model outside of the Revit design software. Unfortunately, this means that either a lot of time is wasted in trying to locate clashes from reports, or worse, clash detection is just not happening at all to avoid the hassle, which of course can lead to unforeseen redesign costs or constructability issues later in the project. Let's look at how clash detection can be done inside of Revit. So less time is spent on tasks that interrupt your workflow and more time is spent on making your designs better. First, we'll look at the Autodesk sample project and clash pipes versus ducts. In the Model Manager Parameter Transformer tool, you can filter for anything you want in the model as your first set of elements. In this case, we'll just do a simple search for the category pipes, but you could include as many categories or parameter filters as you want. Then we can click on Find Clashing Elements to select our second set of elements to clash against. Here we can select which model the elements are in and the categories of the elements to clash against. We'll just select ducts and click OK. The title of the dialog box tells us it just found 53 clashes and gives us the option of creating a 3D view of the clashes. For now, let's just look at level one, although I could create a view for multiple levels or individual views for each level. Before I take a look at what was created, I see that the 53 elements are now selected in the parameter transformer, which means I can do things like export data to Excel or create other elements at their locations. Just for fun, let's export the usernames of those users who created these clashing elements. In the Excel tab, I'll select the family and type and the created by properties and export the data to Excel. It looks like most of these clashes were created by Eric and Fitzpar, whoever those Autodesk employees are. Now someone can let them know to check their work. So back in Revit, we'll close the parameter transformer tool and see that the clashing elements are selected. We can see them both in the 3D view and in the floor plan. Once you click on something, you will lose the group selection, but they will remain red in the 3D view. You could, of course, create a Revit selection set on the Manage tab if you wanted to reselect them quickly. In the 3D view, you can see that the clashing elements are easily visible with the other categories made transparent. Without having to leave Revit, you can now see the clashes and start to do something about them. So let's suppose that you wanted to find some more specific items to clash against, like clashing fire rated walls against ductwork piping and conduit. Back in the tool, let's look for walls in the linked model. Then let's look for elements where the fire rating parameter does not equal, and we'll leave it blank. In your project, this could be a different parameter or a specific wall type to filter. If you wanted, you could change the parameter filter and run again to further narrow your results, like only those elements on a certain level or created by a certain user. We're just going to click Find Clashing Elements. The default categories are linear MEP categories, so we'll just click OK for now. And we'll look at level one again. So one thing to notice here is that the walls are just shaded but not colored. This is because Revit can't override individual linked elements. This also means that in order for clash results to be meaningful inside Revit, at least one of the clashing elements needs to be in the current model. Meaning if you selected linked model elements in both the first set and the second set, then there won't really be much to look at. Let's now do a structural example to show another quick feature. In the tool, I'll just select structural framing in the linked model, find clashing elements, then I'll accept the default MEP categories and select level one again. Now here in the 3D view, the structural is always colored in the link to easily differentiate it from the other elements. Again, the individual elements would be red if they were inside the current model and not a linked model. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on a clash and we'll move a duct to resolve the clash. Note that resolving the clash does not automatically recolor the elements. You will need to rerun the clash detection to get an updated view of the clashes, including any new clashes that you may have created when moving the things. Now, besides strictly running clash detection, there are a couple more coordination tips using these tools that may help you out in your work. If someone else is performing clash detection on your model using Navisworks, ask them for an HTML export of the clash report. It will usually look like this or this. In the parameter transformer, you can just click the Get Elements from HTML Report button to select the elements in your model. You have the option to only import one column of the Navisworks report or both. 
this HTML import works with both Navisworks reports as well as Revit warning reports. So you can use it to visualize those as well. Then we'll click the coordinate in 3D button to see these in a 3D view. Now, instead of trying to manually locate each of the clashes from the report, you can now view them all right inside Revit where you can get right to work resolving them. Now I'll open an architectural model to show a different way this coordinate in 3D button can be used when you want to visualize different elements. In the parameter transformer tool, I'll choose stairs and doors, but you could narrow your selection to only doors that have access control hardware or choose structural beams of a certain depth or drinking fountains or furniture, ductworks, fire sprinklers, or a combination of anything else. I'll click the coordinate in 3D button and select level one again. Now in the 3D view, the red elements you see are not specifically clashes this time. They represent whatever you chose to highlight with everything else made transparent. So this can make it easy to check distances between elements or check for adequate coverage or visualize the path of certain systems. So with these tools, you now have a few more ways to coordinate and to visualize your designs without having to spend time analyzing the model outside of Revit and then trying to match up the locations one at a time. Make sure your design teams and collaboration partners are making efficient use of the tools available to them. Visit the website for additional tools and resources to help you on your next projects.